Okay, hello to everybody. I'm Eric Bergener. I'm a research director at IDC, and I work in the storage arena. And I'm going to give you a little bit more of a flavor of what's happening from the overall market in terms of revenues, and we're going to take a quick look at what's happening in the but what we're calling the rack scale flash space, which are basically end-to-end -end NVMe systems that are already shipping from a couple of different vendors. So first let's take a look at flash's impact on enterprise storage overall. So what we can see from this uh, forecast here, which shows a little bit of historical and also the forecast out through 2020, is that the um, gray area, which are all flash arrays, is clearly growing uh, faster than the other areas. In fact, the other areas are declining over time. So what we're seeing here are uh, HDD only arrays, which is the dark one at the bottom. The blue one is the hy hybrid flash arrays, which is a mix of flash and HDD in the same systems. And then the gray are all flash arrays. So this is clearly going to be taking over in the enterprise arena. Uh, for 2016, we already saw 70% of the primary storage spend went towards all flash array purchases. So there's still a lot of the other types of arrays that are being bought for secondary uses and also in environments where customers want to mix primary and secondary workloads on the same platform and they're looking for that lower blended dollar per gig cost they can get out of HDD only. But flash is clearly here to stay and will come to dominate uh, as we go forward. We're already seeing the use of flash in some secondary storage environments. Uh, although that's at this point that's relatively nascent. Okay, on the overall SSD side, so what we're showing here is commercial SSDs versus client and enterprise. And you can see enterprise, which is the light blue line, is really coming to dominate revenue generation as we go forward. So by 2020, almost 60% of the revenue uh, from SSDs in general is going to come from the enterprise arena. Now what we took a look at here was the shift in revenue by interface. And so what we're seeing over the forecast period is a shift away from basically SCSI, SATA and SAS on SSDs, clearly towards the use of uh, NVMe. And you can see by 2020, you've got over 60% of the revenue that's being generated um, you know, in, in this arena by PCIe. So we really see a shift in the use of SCSI as the foundation technology behind enterprise arrays towards NVMe. And we think that's going to hit sort of in the 2020 to 2021 time frame. Right now, however, there's very minimal revenue being generated by uh, purpose-built end-to-end NVMe-based systems. In fact, 99% of the revenue in 2016 uh, for NVMe actually came from the purchase of just NVMe SSDs, which end users were putting into commodity x86 systems that they already own. So very little of this today is being bought as a system. There's a couple of very specific workloads we're going to look at where that's being used, so we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. But clearly the message here is that PCI is, uh, PCIe is going to come to dominate over the course of the next three to four years. Okay, so rack scale flash. Let me make a, a couple of quick comments about our taxonomy in the all flash array space. So we see three kinds of all flash arrays. There are primary all flash arrays, uh, and these are systems that are generally block based and targeted for use with databases, VDI, basically primary workloads that have some level of mission criticality around them. So this is like uh, extreme IO, pure storage flash array, the Caminario K2, those kind of systems. The second type of system is what we call big data flash. And these are systems that uh, are optimized more for dollar per gigabyte cost and high storage density. So this might be something like the SanDisk, now Western Digital InfiniFlash product, uh, and there's some other products that are sort of designed in the same arena. They don't necessarily deliver the same kind of latency you get out of the primary systems, but they're built more for multi-petabyte environments where you start to care about things like how much capacity can I get in a single U, um, what, are, what are my power consumption requirements you know, for a five-petabyte configuration, and also in that particular case, 
you care a lot more about things like bandwidth and throughput because you're dealing with much larger data sets. So Flash's ability to move much larger data sets a lot faster than HDD and SCSI, uh, you know, significantly of interest in that arena. The third type are rack scale Flash. And so these systems, the definition of these systems is end-to-end, -end, it's all NVMe, there's no SCSI. They've got NVMe devices, they've got NVMe backplanes in the systems, and they've got some kind of an NVMe over fabric connection to the hosts. We started to see these systems ship last year. Um, the revenue for these systems, however, in 2016 overall was well under 50 million, so still a very small space. Um, most of the vendors in, in this arena are pitching this as the same latency you might get from an internal SSD, but with basically unlimited capacity and enterprise features in many cases. So some of these vendors have built things like RAID, snapshots uh, on the software side and on the hardware side, uh, they've built in dual plug, hot port type of features that may not necessarily be available in off the shelf NVMe SSDs from multiple sources yet. Um, that obviously is gonna change as the NVMe standard evolves over time, but these vendors were trying to hit a certain feature point, i.e. enterprise NVMe with these kind of systems. There's a couple of other players um, that I just want to mention in this arena as well besides these four, all of whom have announced systems. So I think uh, another vendor, Pavilion Data, is going to be showing a system in the Seagate booth uh, at this show. Uh, we've seen two vendors sort of get out of this arena already. So EMC had an entry in this space called DSSD and that product was taken off the market in March of this year. And then there was another company called Mangstore that um, they were shipping products of other kinds last year. They've kind of stopped shipping at this point, and it's not clear what's going to happen with that company going, going forward. So there are some other players uh, in this arena. Now there's I, two other points I want to make. So the DSSD D5 product. What was different about that product for all of these other ones is these are all basically built around web scale architectures. Commodity off the shelf hardware for the most part with the exception of maybe some packaging to make sure that they get hot plug. The D5 from EMC used a bunch of custom hardware and uh, EMC didn't specifically announce when they took that product off the market uh, why they did that, although they did say they were going to re be repurposing that PCIe technology into other products, but it's my suspicion that what they were able to achieve from a performance point of view with that platform was not uh, enough, well, there wasn't really a cost differential between that and what you could buy from these guys that were roughly a third the cost and they could get 80 to 85% of the performance. So I think EMC saw the handwriting on the wall. Um, the D5 actually was an amazing product from a performance point of view, but the cost point I think was gonna be an issue for them going forward. So I think that's why that, that product ran away. There's one other product I want to mention, which is pure storage. And so why pure merits a sort of a separate call out here is of all the vendors, now that EMC is out of the game, playing in this arena, they're the only basically billion dollar storage vendor that has actually announced an end-to-end -end NVMe system. And they're not actually shipping it yet. Uh, they're shipping NVMe devices, they've got NVMe backplanes and controllers built into their system, and they've mentioned that they're going to be introducing an NVMe over fabric add-on next year that will effectively turn that system uh, into one of these rack scale flash. But it, it is significant that we've got a major player now shipping a, a product in this space because the other folks are, are obviously uh, startups out there. One of the dynamics we've seen in the all flash array space is that if you look at the top six vendors, the, the capabilities, the, the IOPS, the throughput, the latency, the feature sets, the data services, they're all pretty similar. There's not much of differentiation between those six players. And I think uh, pure <coughs> rushing into NVMe is a way for them to differentiate themselves. We're also seeing other players in that space uh, either about to make announcements or recently have made announcements about their NVMe readiness. Uh, what's sort of ironic about that is there are not very many workloads in the enterprise arena that actually require uh, NVMe performance yet. There, there are some, and we're going to talk about those in a minute, but, but basically there's not much of a need for it. 
And in fact, uh, what we see from even the SCSI-based all-flash arrays is there's still a lot of headroom for performance growth even within that technology given the types of workloads that most customers want to use all flash arrays for. So this is very early on in the NVMe space. Um, you know, one of the questions I ask uh, vendors when they talk to me about their plans in this arena is how much revenue do they expect to generate from NVMe-based offerings versus SCSI-based offerings, which most of them, although not all, plan to keep around. And I think if they have a realistic point of view that they're not going to sell very many of the NVMe systems for the next couple of years, um, then it's fine that they have something like that. Okay, so why is NVMe important? Uh, I think we heard a lot about that from some of the other folks, but from, from, from my point of view, from a systems uh, vantage point, so we get a much lighter weight I.O. stack. The efficiencies of NVMe versus SCSI are much greater. And so as we look at the parallelism that we're going to want to uh, leverage in systems that are going to be supporting much denser mixed workload consolidation going forward. That's going to be a that's going to be a key advantage. Obviously, there are throughput and uh, latency advantages as well. So the workloads. Okay, so I, I've had a chance actually to talk to customers of every one of those guys that we had up on screen, with the exception of Micron, because they were they just recently announced, and they're not actually shipping a GA version of that product yet. Two kinds of workloads. Number one is super high performance databases that might otherwise look at buying an engineered system like an Oracle Exadata. So that's one area we've seen. Actually, DSSD had a lot of pilots with that kind of a workload. The other one is real-time big data analytics. And so I'm drawing a distinction here between batch-oriented data analytics and the real-time type where they need to basically parse huge data sets uh, while at the same time they're ingesting massive amounts of data from literally millions of data capture points, social media on a worldwide basis, etc., and come up with very time sensitive results. Um, most of these are extremely custom built applications by the end users that are running them. There were less than, uh, on January 30th of this year, there were less than 40 of these kinds of systems that have been sold in the world across you know, all of those rack scale flash vendors. So it's very small, although clearly it's gonna be growing. But those are the two areas in the near term. Um, the other thing that's of interest is there are cases where you wanna be able to move data sets around for things like composability, where the NVMe bandwidth is a lot more interesting than what you could potentially deliver with uh, SAS based systems. So while that's not a workload, that might be an interesting area. Um, probably nobody's going to buy the system just for that, but it's another potential benefit that you could get out of an NVMe-based system today. Okay, and then th there's also some other advantages in terms of efficiencies for at-scale computing. So, you know, one of the things that we saw, uh, I'll reference the D5 again, even though it's gone, because I think we're going to be hearing many of the same claims from some of the other vendors is, they said, you know, look, you can buy an Oracle Exadata system that takes up two racks, or you can buy a 5U D5, and you can basically get, you know, 50% better performance. So you've got performance density, you've got also higher storage capacity density uh, in these, uh, these uh, systems. So I think that's definitely going to be a play as you see more of these systems start to ship in the future. And obviously there's another issue in enterprise systems when you look at rebuild times for the larger capacity SSDs. You know, even with the 15.3 terabyte from Samsung, if you're trying to rebuild that entire drive through a 12 gig SaaS interface, that takes a long time. And you know, we've already got vendors talking about 32 and 64 terabyte class devices. So you're, you're gonna have to have NVMe if you wanna put that into some kind of an erasure coded or a RAID configuration in one of these systems. Um, which by the way is gonna be another limitation about how quickly these systems actually get out there because um, you know, in an eight device NVMe device system, you're going to be able to produce 10x the IOPS you could get out of the biggest, you know, all flash arrays that are built around SCSI technologies today. Most people that we talk to, because we ask this question a lot, are using maybe between 20 and 30 percent of the performance capability of their existing primary all flash arrays. So there's a lot of room for growth uh, still within those technologies, as I mentioned earlier. 
Okay, let's take a look at some, uh, why do people buy NVMe, how much of it is it out there? So this is from a survey we did in April of this year, worldwide survey, uh, there were over a thousand people that responded to it. This is all enterprise users. Um, what we found is lots of people are playing with NVMe SSDs. These are all primarily ones they bought aftermarket to stick into x86 servers they already own. Um, you can see that if you look at currently using and planning to use, you know, on the left hand side, I mean, we're talking about 96, 97% uh, of the people out there. Why do people buy it? So there's a single biggest reason, which is better scalability to meet performance requirements, but you can also see that the other top four came in pretty close. So better dollar per IOPS, uh, they need that bandwidth to move dar large data sets, and the increased storage density. It's kind of interesting to see that lower latency didn't come up very high on the survey results. And that's, in, in my opinion, for enterprise workloads, that's because people are generally getting lat the latency that they need, even from 12 gig SAS. Where they're not getting it is for real-time big data analytics and these super high performance databases. And those are the guys, obviously, that are buying NVMe, uh, I mean, rack scale flash systems. Uh, in that same survey, we asked people about strategies that they're deploying to help manage high storage growth, which all of them were experiencing. And first of all, buying, buying flash devices, three out of the four top responses basically had to do with that. That third one in their public cloud SaaS for offloading, so get basically getting the, the data out of their infrastructure. But you can see, you know, even 39% of the people uh, specifically bought NVMe as a strategy to manage data growth. Okay, so there's, there's a concept that in, in a lot of the research work that IDC does, we call digital transformation. You guys may have heard of that, or there's other folks that talk about it in, in different terms, but basically this is you know, sort of the move away from the older um, enterprise application, all on-premise infrastructure kind of computing to the newer models that's a hybrid cloud based around web scale infrastructure and using next generation architectures that are built very differently from sort of the legacy apps like you know an Oracle database as an example. So 72% of the companies are investing in digital transformation and there's a strong correlation between people that are doing digital transformations and those that buy NVMe devices. So that's why I'm, I'm making this a distinction here is that you know that 72% number from before um, this is going to be one of the factors driving NVMe purchases forward. What we think is that by 2020, 75% of the Fortune 2000 will have at least one real-time big data analytics workload running in their environment that they'll consider mission critical. And these are, these are going to be used for all sorts of things from um, you know, exploration in oil and gas to demand generation in retail and, uh, you know, other kinds of environments there. there. There's just a lot of different uses, but we really think that big data analytics is going to permeate how companies do business going forward. And those people that don't have one of those kind of environments running so that they can keep a much closer pulse on how their own markets are evolving and what new market opportunities are arising that allow them to take advantage of that very quickly, you know, they're going to be at a disadvantage if they're not running one of these real-time big data analytics environments. So obviously a major driver for NVMe performance. Okay, so a couple of, a couple of closing comments. Um, again, we think that, more, that by 2020, more than 50% of the revenue in the all-flash array sort of primary space will actually come from rack scale flash systems. So there's going to be a huge growth rate between now, where it's under 50 million a year, and what we're going to see in that time frame. Now, uh, remember, when you look at our overall numbers uh, for revenue in the enterprise storage space, our assumption is that 25% of the revenue goes towards primary purchases and 75% goes to secondary. Secondary less on a dollar per gig basis, but there's generally eight to 10x as much capacity if you look at how an enterprise apportions primary versus secondary. Um, the, the use of NVMe uh, will grow slowly, but it, it's gonna be driven primarily by what workloads people are running. Um, so, you know, 
for vendors out there getting into this space, it's going to be very important to draw that connection between their customer targets, what kind of apps are they running, and their need for NVMe. Um, other reasons to talk to consider NVMe, we did talk about these before, but you know this whole data mobility issue is, is something that I think is, is very interesting and obviously for rebuild times, another data mobility issue, uh, that's going to be another, another key here. Now, you know, of the top six AFA vendors, and I'll, and I'll tell you who they are uh, just so you know, so it's Dell EMC, uh, NetApp, HP, Pure Storage, IBM, and then uh, a smaller company, Caminario, is number six. So several of these guys have already made announcements about our NVMe-ready systems. Pure is already shipping some, some NVMe in this new system. IBM actually has been shipping PCIe backplanes in one of their all-flash arrays for quite a while. That was from the Texas Memory Acquisition. So there are some vendors that have some good experience uh, with that technology already in enterprise use. But it's really become clear to us that designs like the D5 that are heavily custom, that, that's a big risk in this arena. We think that the successful systems of the future are primarily going to be web scale designs built around commodity hardware and the value for these NVMe systems uh, will be primarily from a functionality point of view in the software.